Hey guys, Too Legit City here, and today we're gonna be going over the Lakewood Sofer Geyser Tamer. This right here, this design is a design that we came up with to tame the Liquid Sulfur Geyser. Now the Liquid Sulfur Geyser is a little bit finicky because of how the liquid spawns at 165 degrees Celsius, but it doesn't solidify into a solid until the temperature goes below 115. Now the problem with that is, is that initially means that a steam turbine is not enough as the steam turbine only cools it down to 125. So instead we made this design to tame the sulfur, cool it down immediately and have it usable. As you can see, we have a lot of it on these tiles. But of course, we're gonna have this spill out and you guys are gonna see it in action before we explain any of the parts about it. As you can see right there, the liquid sulfur is in a vacuum, allowing this to spill out and not solidify on this tile. That's a key thing as we're not able to go into here and pick up the sulfur. And that also means that the sulfur will not be cooled down. Now, as the sulfur erupts, it's going to spill out onto the water. As you can see there, it immediately solidifies. Our auto super picks it up and puts it on a rail line as it will be cooled by the radiant piping we're running behind that that's coming in from an aqua tuner and by doing so we super chill the sulfur now we have a temperature sensor on the uh conveyor rail loop right here and that's set to above 30 meaning that if it's hotter than 30 degrees celsius it's gonna drop off on the chute right there to chill a second time normally you're not gonna need more than two passes before the sulfur is gonna be ready and as you can see here, the sulfur is not actually hot enough to create steam. Now there's a couple things with this because of how liquid sulfur is a liquid before it cools down into a solid. It will take a tile space. So there is a little bit of finickiness with the liquids, but we'll go into that once we talk about the design. But as you can see right here, sulfur is coming in. It's chilling pretty quickly and we're able to get more sulfur come out of the chute. Let's talk about the design. Inside here, this is a nine tile wide. That's exactly the space for the auto sweeper. The auto sweeper could reach all spaces in the bottom compartment as that's the idea for the design and the design space. Now, underneath that, we also have some temp shift plates. One here, one here, one here, one here. Four temp shift plates made out of diamond. Ideally, you'd wanna place them like so. And then we also have a radiant pipeline coming in, adding in cold thermal energy. The idea is though we are using water because we want something that does not off gas and holds a lot of thermal energy. So although you could use something like crude oil because it doesn't have a lot of SHC capacity, it's going to heat up a lot higher meaning that your aqua tuner might have to do more work. By having your water chilled, once you get your water to the correct temperatures, usually it's gonna be as close to zero as possible. It's going to mean that the water is gonna have a hard time heating up. As you can see right here, this goes up to 14.2, but that's really it. And it's trying to go back down after the fact. Everywhere else is around a 12.9 and the oil or the water right here is not really heating up. That's why it doesn't actually become steam because of the amount of water volume, a couple thousand, a right, thousand kilograms per tile, more or less. And it's able to just cool down the sulfur. Now, of course, the rail overlay is as shows. It's just a simple zigzag from the loader at the bottom left. It zigzags all the way to the right before going all the way back to the left again, where we do a heat check on the tile. And if it's too hot, we loop it back again. With the chute and the auto sweeper, we'll just load it back up. Now, of course, the liquid piping is at shows. We have the aqua tuner on the other side set to 16 degrees Celsius, as that will always bring it down lowest two degrees. And that makes it so that the water can't freeze accidentally. Now, outside of that, the one thing to actually check this out with is the amount of water. You're going to want to have a thousand kilograms per tile at the bottom. And then the second layer, you want a thousand kilograms as well per tile. Now, the top tile right here is a little bit weird. You actually want this below 750 kilograms, as you could see that 
when the liquid sulfur spills in, it displaces the water for a second, but that second of displacing the water shuffles up the water pressure. As you can see now that it's not dripping anymore, it's going to even out the water levels, but you need to give it leeway because when the liquid spills in, the water is going to push up and to the left. And if you have too much water on the top layer, this is actually going to push upwards into the geyser, creating steam due to the fact that if the water pushes up and stays there, it's actually not touching any of the water at the bottom. So that water will become steam, you'll have sulfur at this layer, and you won't be able to grab that on automation. So it's very important you guys don't fill this up too high. You, ideally, you're going to want to have it around 500 kilograms per tile. Uh, but, you know, having too little water is not a good thing. So we'll shoot for 500 exactly. And having a little bit more is okay as long as it's always below, you know, the 750 value. I would say even 600 at that point. But being close to 500 is going to be the key takeaway for that. But this is the liquid sulfur tamer. As you could see, you could very easily get as much sulfur as you can. Our conveyor rail center is set to 30. If you're okay with a hotter temp, you could change this at your own choosing. And this is the design. Now, of course, another thing to talk about is the vacuum. I don't think I mentioned this. When building this, you need to make sure that this room is a vacuum. If you have a gas present here, that gas is going to touch the cold water and always solidify the sulfur, ruining the automation setup. So make sure that when you do try to build the design, you maintain a vacuum before the liquid sulfur erupts. But otherwise, this is the liquid sulfur tamer design. If you guys have any questions about it, leave a comment down below. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you guys.